Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about internships and just the general process for that. I know this is a frequent question that I get from students in my class, and I suspect even members of the general internet watching my YouTube channel might be interested in this as well. So it's important for me to state that for this video, I'm talking really about just what I've observed in general, working at the university, working with other companies, and what students have told me, working with a variety of companies, and a little bit what I um, know about in my, in my own uh, company that I work for. I'm a vice president of data science for a for a Fortune 300 insurance company and work with a number of interns. I've hired a number of interns over the years, so some of that is coming from that as well. But I'm speaking as myself, not as any of my respective employers. And of course, if you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of any additional videos that I create. The content of this video is essentially just a very condensed version of a talk that I typically give at the university at probably once a year or so, speaking to students who are about to go look for internships. So internships. This is something that's very important for students, and rightfully so. This gives you experience, and as you're moving closer and closer to graduation from your uh, from your academic career and you want to move into industry, or even if you potentially wanted to stay in academia and go on to a doctoral degree, postdoc, uh, that sort of a route, having an internship in industry can be, can be quite helpful for you. Internships can often lead into permanent employment with that particular company, or they can also just be very, very good experience to put on your resume, to put on your your LinkedIn profile. Sometimes you can have the supervisor that you had during your internship actually write LinkedIn recommendations. Those can also be useful. I, I typically do that for interns that, uh, that report to me. So internships usually align with the academic semesters. There's three of them, at least going by the, the United States setup and many other countries are, are similar as well. So you have the fall and spring semesters using WashU lingo. And you have also the, you have the summer semester. Typically, most students are thinking about internships when it comes to the summer semester. But those other two semesters can be valuable for internships as well. One thing to be aware of, at least from what I've noticed and been told by other students through other companies, the summer internships, I mean, what's great about that is typically you don't have a lot of classes. If you're trying to squeeze a internship into one of your other two semesters, you might not be able to take classes that semester and or maybe just one, and that can affect your your graduation. So the thing to think about, though, is internships at companies are not just available in the summer. They're available in all three semesters. Speaking as somebody from the company side, it's more difficult to find people outside of the summer semester because there's just, there's just fewer students and there's fewer applying for those. What that can mean, though, is you have less competition. So if you can find a internship and it's one of your first ones and you you see something open and maybe you've you've talked to the particular hiring manager or you know the company, you you might have a greater. I mean, I'm a data scientist. You might have a greater probability of, uh, of securing that because you'll be in a smaller pool. Potentially it doesn't always work out that way, but it's good to it's good to keep your options open as you're as you're going through and looking for these. Another tip that I that I like to give is be aware of things going on in LinkedIn and other other places. Be aware of your professors who are teaching you these classes, particularly adjuncts. 
I, I'm an adjunct professor at Washington University. I teach one class a semester, except for in the summer. I do this really just to keep my own knowledge sharp of deep learning. My main job, though, is an in industry, and one, one class is all I have time to teach. If you have a professor who is like that, who is his main job is something else during the day, his main job probably hires students who are in who are of the same subject area that you are because he's teaching the class you're in the class there's there's a good chance there particularly in stem because virtually all companies have it and have data science and and these other things so always talk to people and try to find out what uh, what you what might be available what you can anything that you can glean from somebody who is on the inside Failing that you have to go through the front door you basically you can usually search on a particular company like Google internships or My own company's namespace internships and it'll take you to a page that we that we have set up that lists internship availabilities typically you will then go through HR They'll vet and screen, and then they'll take what resumes they think are nice and pass those on to the hiring managers, uh, maybe to a group, and then they finally get to the hiring manager. If you know somebody um, on LinkedIn who has posted that they're interested in, in internships, or if you see that somebody has written a endorsement for um, one of your fellow students, and as an intern you know then that they hire interns so basically if you can if you can find these people just shoot them a message on linkedin i don't mind at all if somebody sends me a message asking what i know about internships or if anything's available i tend to hire people who are fairly heavy coders who like python and machine learning and that kind of thing i will either let you know what i have available or i'll potentially send you off to somebody else Worst case, they ignore you. Who cares? Uh, it's it, networking is everything. If you can get right to the actual hiring manager and get advice there, you can often skip a couple of levels that uh, that would potentially take a week or two to get through. So be creative in 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 what you do with these things. Don't be annoying, but it it doesn't hurt to uh, to reach out to people. So the process once you've submitted your resume to somebody to to an hr department to a particular hiring manager that you've that you found yourself somebody the way i typically will do things and i've, I've heard of other companies very similar you'll reach out to the actual uh, student and talk to them you have to verify eligibility the companies have different policies for this um we require that somebody still be a student so if you're if it's your semester that you're graduating and you're trying to find uh, find an internship for the semester after you've graduated some companies will do this some will not um if it it all depends what i've mainly worked with is paid internships for while the student is still a uh, still a student if they're graduating in the same semester that they are a student that's okay but i can't really at least for for the way we define internships i can't hire somebody who has just graduated as as an intern that would be that would be a regular full-time employment or a contractor so be sure that you're um, aware of that it depends on the company. Many companies can deal with out-of-town out of students as well. So make sure you ask about that. Uh, some will help out-of-town students to, uh, to take on their internships. Some have budget for this in the summer. Some do not. So just, just reach out, see what is available at these, at these particular companies. So usually what will happen is you'll be contacted by somebody in the company. Either this will be HR or this will be one of the actual hiring managers directly. And they'll set up some sort of, often you'll go through a phone screen first, just a, a real quick screen after they've seen your resume. Uh, they'll definitely want to see your resume first and then 
I could do a whole video just on what I look for in resumes, but the point is, if it's a technical position, make sure you have the technologies listed. If it's something like data science, make sure that you're listing that you've worked with Spark and you've worked with R and Python and regression and classification models, these kind of things. If you're a full stack web developer, make sure you're talking about how you've used Node.js and the latest the latest frameworks there like React and Angular and all these all these nice things. If it is not a technical position, I, I work less with those, so I, I wouldn't know as well, but make sure you're you're listing on the resume what the skills that you believe that that employer is going to be uh, is going to be looking for. Then you'll typically have a actual face-to-face -face interview with the department or a person who's going to be hiring you. If you're in the same city as them, that will, even for an intern interview, that will sometimes be on location at the company. I often like to do this because then I can actually see the person face to face. They can also see the company and the area they, they would potentially be, be working in. There's usually several sort of elimination rounds. So there might be an initial screen and then it may go nowhere from there. Anybody that I talk to, I always try to reach out and let them know if we're not proceeding. I don't like to, I think the term is ghost. I don't like to ghost people. So that's not necessarily the true of, a, of every person you'll, in, you'll encounter. If it's been a week or so and you haven't heard something, feel free to shoot them an email. I think that's always a good idea. I don't really see a downside of that. If they don't answer the email, uh, the answer is probably no as far as going anywhere further. I usually do interviews in two parts. There's a uh, kind of just general chit chat sort of interview. I like to always ask about other projects that you've worked on and then I will ask about those. So some things just high level to be aware of. I'm going, uh, I others like to ask you just to explain that project that you've worked on. And you might say, well, I developed a classification neural network for this real estate application. Okay, then I'll ask, I'll always follow up with more detail. So always be ready with the detail. If you say you did a classification neural network, I'm going to say, why classification? Why, why didn't you do regression? And by the way, what's the difference between classification and regression? And neural network. What what did it why did you pick a neural network? How did you choose that? Why what other machine learning models did you did you consider? So rather than just shooting you a bunch of questions that are unrelated to potentially things that you've worked on, I like, especially for interns, I always like to ask about class projects and basically just ask for details. Data science, a great one always is how did you evaluate your model? How did you know if it was good or bad? How did you how did you know that you were even doing the right thing? Did you have to ask the professor questions? How do you because we want to see that you can work with people as well as as well as technologies? And how do you research and find out problems? Do you Google it, Stack Overflow? And Another common question that I've, I've read about a lot and seen and heard from students as well is they want to know that you're passionate about the technology. And how do you say that you're passionate about a technology? Go to meetups, go to presentations, watch webcasts from some of these big conferences that gives you information to, to uh, talk about. You can say, oh yeah, I'm very passionate about LSTM networks or convolution neural networks or these various things. And I, I watched this great video from Google where one of the original developers was actually talking about it. That's that's how you show that you're that you're passionate about something that you that you care about it. Not that you just took a class on it, figured it out and and haven't haven't looked or cared about it since. And then the last thing I'll talk about is just timing. This is a common question that I that I get, and this depends completely upon the company that you're dealing with. But when do you need to start looking for the internships? It can really happen at any time. Usually by so say the summer. Say you're shooting for a summer internship. Usually early in the spring internships, so like January, we're trying to really lock down on who we're going to actually have for summer. If it's March, April, May, 
that you're just now starting to look for an internship for the summer, that might not work so well, or it might work great. Uh, because I will sometimes have interns fall through at the last minute, and then all of a sudden I'm scrambling to fill that, fill that spot. And for the student that happens to walk right into one of those spots, that can work, that can work really well. But overall, if you're shooting for summer, probably January, February is when you'll be talking to the company, but you'll want to be reaching out and strategizing that probably in November, December of the previous year. I also cover on my YouTube channel stuff from my, my course at Washington University and machine learning. So if this stuff sounds interesting to you, then definitely join my, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.